Hi, uh, welcome back. So, today we will be talking about uh, uh, mainly focusing on activation functions and initialization methods and these are all uh, geared towards making deep learning uh, or deep neural networks train better. Right? So, we will first do a quick recap, set the context about why we are talking about activation functions and initialization methods and then uh, introduce a bunch of uh, activation functions as well as initialization methods. Okay? So, let us start with a quick recap as I said. So, uh, when we train neural networks, so we started with this very simple network which had just one parameter w. In fact, we had started with two parameters w and b, but I have just kept one parameter and we already saw how to train this network. The idea was to use gradient descent or any of its variants and the main ingredient there was to update the weight using some kind of an update rule which internally contained the derivative. Right? So, this is the quantity that uh, was important and we saw various variants of the gradient descent algorithm, but in all of these the gradient shows up in one way or the other. Right? So, this is a quantity which is important uh, and uh, we also saw how to this how to compute this quantity right so uh, we saw we had de derived this for the simple network and the key observation that we had made there was that the derivative is actually proportional to the input x right? that's the one important observation that we had made and that also had uh, kind of aided our discussion on what happens when the input is passed because in most cases this x would be 0 and then we came up with these adaptive methods and so on. Right? So, this observation we have made a couple of, couple of times before about the derivative formula having this x as a factor and hence if x is large something can happen, if x is small something can happen and so on. Right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, then from this uh, uh, very thin and very shallow network, we went to a wider network which had many inputs but it is still a shallow network, there is only one layer input and out. in fact, there is no layer input and output that is it and even in this case when the update rule remains the same, it is just that the same update rule applies to all the parameters and the derivative for any parameter again shows up this red term here which is the input connected to that weight. Right? So, again this term was showing up and if this is high, low, 0 and so on, uh, we saw what are the ramifications of that. Right? Even similarly, now if we have a uh, thin network, but a deeper network, we still use the derivative. It is just that we compute the derivative using a chain rule, uh, but nothing else changes. right? I mean, the conceptually everything remains the same and again in this chain rule, this h 0 has shown up here, which is again the input to the network and this is for the weight w 1, but in general for any weight, you had some formula for the derivative. We do not care what the actual formula was, but all we care about is there was this term h uh, of i minus 1. Uh, sorry, this should have been suffix h i minus 1 and not like h i minus 1, right. So, it is just the suffix is i minus 1 and for w 1, of course, i minus 1 would be 0. So, h 0 showed up here and h 0 was the same as x, the input, but for any layer, if I am looking at this layer, then the derivative of the loss function with respect to this weight is going to be proportional to h 2, that means the input that this weight was connected. right? So, the h s are the inputs coming from the previous layer. They are of course, also the output of some layer, but for this current layer, they are the input. right? So, the derivatives are always proportional to the uh, inputs connected to the weights. Right? That is the main observation that we had uh, made and I am just repeating that in this uh, recap that we are doing. Right? Uh, okay. Now, uh, if, if there is a network which is deep and wide, again we calculated the same thing, we calculated the derivative of the loss function with respect to any weight by using this chain rule applied across multiple paths, not just one path, but three different paths here and again we saw uh, some uh, uh, formula for this and we derived this in quite detail when we studied the back propagation algorithm. Right? So, now the question is uh, uh, or the points to remember right now are that training neural networks is a game of gradients. You have, you compute gradients at every layer and then you use whatever variant or your favorite variant of the uh, gradient based approach. It could be momentum, nag, adam, adamax, whatever you want to use, but the derivatives will get used inside them. right? And this gradient is the way of quantifying the responsibility of the parameter towards the loss. The higher the gradient, higher the responsibility, lower the gradient, lower the responsibility. right? And the gradient with respect to a parameter is proportional to the input connected to that parameter. In the single uh, uh, or the input output network, this uh, 
input was just x. In a multi-layered network, it's just the input from the previous layer, which is h i minus 1, right? So, that's, these are things to remember. Now, things to uh, 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 wonder about are that we learned this back propagation algorithm, right? And we said that this is the basis for training all the deep neural networks, right? And we saw feed forward neural networks already. Later on in the course, we will uh, see convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and then transformers. And for all of them, training happens using the back propagation algorithm, right? So, is it that this back propagation algorithm was something that was d discovered in the last decade, maybe around 2009, 2010? And then deep learning became so popular because we have been, uh, we I mean kind of know that deep learning has been popular since 2009-2010 in NLP maybe around 2014 and so on, but in the last decade, right? So, is it that around that time uh, this algorithm got discovered and then uh, we all started switching to deep neural networks? No, actually, right? So, the back propagation algorithm existed much before, I think uh, late 70s or even before that if for all I know, but I definitely know that in 1986. There was this, it was made popular in the context of uh, neural networks by uh, Rumel, Hart and uh, team, right? So, it has existed for a long time. So, what was happening since from 1986 to 2009, 2010 when deep learning became really popular, right? Why was deep learning not so popular in the 90s or early 2000s given that the algorithm used for training it existed back then, right? So, what was stopping it from becoming popular? So, the issue is that. Uh, while this algorithm existed, in theory you know that you can train a deep neural network by just chaining the gradients and computing the gradients using the chain rule. In practice, when you are trying to train deep neural networks as deep as 4 or 5 layers, it was not very successful, right? And what I mean by successful, not successful is that the networks did not converge, right? Did not converge reliably. Of course, lot of other things have changed. Now, you have faster compute. So, earlier if you had to use a certain number of flops, then you would need so many days of computation. Now, maybe you need uh, fewer days of uh, computation. So, that has changed. But in general, there were other things, other more uh, uh, theoretical things because of which it was hard to train deep neural networks. It is not just a comp issue of compute, right? So, there are three things that have changed uh, since the 1990s, right? One is, of course, we have much more data now. So, if you have many parameters to train as a deep neural network would have, you need larger amount of data that we have. You need faster compute, we have that. But there were some other things also which needed to fall in place and that is what we will focus on in this lecture, right? So, it is not that this suddenly got discovered in 2009-10 and then people started using deep learning, right? Uh, so, until 2006, it was very hard to train them and uh, in 2006, there was a seminal work that I will talk about, uh, which allowed us to train deep neural networks and that suddenly sparked or revived the interest in deep neural networks. And from then on, we have seen the success story, which has led us to where we are currently in 2022, right? So, we will talk about what happened in this initial years from 2006 to 2009-10, which kind of helped us train this deep neural networks and what was the effect of that and how is that connected to the lecture that we are uh, looking at today, right? So, that is going to be the focus. Uh, so, I will end this video here and I will come back and talk about unsupervised pre-training which is something uh, that happened in 2006 and enabled the training of deep neural